it's completely normal to talk to your toy soldiers while you're painting their eyes. Hi guys, welcome to another 30k tutorial. It's still Horus Heresy time, and this is perhaps the most consistently requested chapter between the purple guys, the Emperor's children. So we're going to get an amazing result on a potentially very striking looking army. And I think we've managed to uh, definitely get the striking bit done. So we're going to be hacking the purple, contrast tech, and some dry brushing before it. And then we're going to be making some sacrifices, cutting some corners and spending our time on a few key areas of the model to really draw attention. Freehand, base, bit of weathering and the eyes. And then you've got a finished marine and it looks great. Like It really does look very, very good. An army of this would look fantastic and it would be really, really quick. If you're an airbrusher, you can use all of these steps, but just do them with the airbrush. I'd keep the middle dry brush step though between the two colours. That's it really. Uh, hang around to the end for some more tips on how to level this up or perhaps even things that you could skip. And also we'll detail more about a competition in the end of that for suggestions for the next video. So if you want to see your subject uh, covered in the next video in terms of the 30k chapters, then make a suggestion below. Let us know what you'd like to see and whatever gets the most likes will satisfy. It's going to be Imperial Fists next. They're going to be very, very weathered. Anyway, let's jump in to the Emperor's Children. Okay, so we have our Prime and Space Marine. It's just black. And what we're going to be doing is putting down a dark silver base coat to start off. You can put this down however, I'm going to stipple it. Um, use a bright silver, so you know, something like Runefang Steel or something like that, and add black to it. Do not use, uh, you can use a dark silver, but I'm specifically choosing to add non metallic paint to a metallic paint that's a bright one to make it darker. There is a reason for this. I want the recesses to be less metallic than the raised areas because then they'll look less shiny. So we're getting not only a difference in how bright uh, and light the section is, but also how shiny it is. So I want it a little bit darker than that. Like I said, we are choosing to use a bright silver. That's looking about right. So you, uh, you could absolutely airbrush this if you wanted. I'm going to pop it down just for Series D, like I said, and we should get incredible one coat coverage you know, like instantly, just a joke. Um, so this will take about 20 seconds. I would describe this as a heavy overbrush, so you're not gonna hit incredibly recessed areas, but you should basically hit everything else. I could have actually gone darker. Might go darker. Of course, everything's going to look very shiny in comparison to a black base coat, but uh, we do want it dark. That's better. Someone didn't drill their gun barrel. Bad. Always, always drill your gun barrels. Whoops. So we got our predictable, insane one coat coverage. More silver now. So I want to remove quite a lot of this. This is a highlighting stage. The police have heard that I haven't been using Holdra Blue. Okay, so we've removed excess. If we want to test it, go to a particularly lumpy, bumpy bit of our texture palette. It's just picking out the raised areas, spin it around from all directions. You could airbrush this stage as well if you wanted, by the way. That'd work out fine. So starting in the areas that I'd like to be the brightest, you can work this out by holding your model under a lamp if you want to simulate sunlight or whatever. I'm just going to do it kind of texture-wise. If it sticks out more, if it's an edge, it's going to get a little bit of a highlight. And we're going to go all over. If you want to particularly, uh, you know, pick out a zone on a rounded area, you can stipple it. Otherwise, I'm going to be using uh, like left to right, up and down dry brushing to kind of hit edges more specifically in shade recesses. You can see it on the head, dark around the detail. All right, that took no time at all. So now we are on to the wash. Looking really good. Head's a very good example around the details. Gun as well. Quick tip about contrast paints. This will be useful for a lot of people. Now, the contrast paints that separate towards the bottom and turn white, they tend to have more blocky, opaque coverage. The ones that don't are more transparent. These behave more like inks, these behave more like paint. One's not good, one's not bad. 
they're just different. So recently on our Alpha Legion that looked super effective, wonderful, kept the transparency through some metallics, which of course was the aim, um, we used two that don't separate white at the bottom. Um, and that really helped, we also diluted it. Corn Magos Purple here, it's a little bit more muted. Um, and so in order to keep the vibrancy, we're gonna be mixing in a special product. So let me show you very close up. Exactly what we're talking about. Now, I would like this to be more vibrant. Find a silver section of my thumb. So it's just lacking a little bit of punch. Um, I'd like it to be more saturated. Where do we get the saturation from? Now, there's multiple products. You could grab uh, an Inktensity ink from Scale 75. I'm going to be grabbing, this is, a, uh, this is a special bottle. This dyed my legs, my socks, and my desk in, uh, in yesteryear. <laughs> that was on the channel. Some uh, loyal viewers may remember that. This is a Liquitex ink. It's very strong. And we only need to use a tiny amount. So even if it covered really well, we don't have to worry too much about that. I'm going to pop it on a silver section of the palette. A micro dot. So that's a little bit full on. That's perfect. And what we've got then instead is just that little bit of brightness and pop that we're hoping for. We're going to work out if we need to mix some medium in. So I'm going to test it on his foot. Always test on the feet because they're going to be made dirty. So if it's bad, then it's okay. Okay, so we're gonna have to do multiple layers anyway. That might be all right. I'll try it with a little bit more of the Liquitex in there. That's gonna be pretty strong and have almost flat coverage in comparison. So that will not pull towards the recesses as much because not as much of it as a percentage as contrast. Okay, that color's good, but I think it might be a little bit full on. So we're gonna go for that type of mix with some medium in there, and then we should get exactly what we want. Of course, I'll cover the ratios when we make the mix, which is now. Okay, so let's start with the body. One, two, three, four. One. Guys out there that hate me contaminating. One, <laughs> two. Okay, so we've got our mix. Make sure it is mixed because we've got different components in there, so they might separate. And as ever, we're going to start somewhere not too important. But what we're going to do is we're not going to we're not going to blob it on. So we're going to blob it on initially, but then we're going to pull from that, use that as a well. And we'll use that to cover more of the mini. So we don't want any pooling. That's what we're trying to avoid. Cover absolutely everywhere. I wonder if this is too pinky. Maybe I put a little bit too much of magenta in. the varnish treatment. That's it. So keep it smooth as possible. Try to avoid pulling. Push it where you want. Lift off where you're okay with it being the heaviest, the normal contrast or ink tips. And uh, yeah, take your time. It's an important step. All right. So that step is done. In all honesty, currently this doesn't look great. Do not despair. I'm not despairing. This happens to us all. A lot of the time, steps that you need to repeat just don't look great on the first application. I'm just going to do a quick silver dry brush all over just to keep those edges, make sure that they stay punchy and highlighty. And uh, we're going to repeat exactly the same step, but we'll do it more thinly and carefully. I've left some areas free. This is to give me the option to turn them gold. You could step down to a smaller brush if you wanted to be more specific with your highlights here. I like using big brushes. Okay, you want to remove a lot of this. It's just for edges, pretty much. So hold your mini at an angle that's going to help. 
elbows and stuff like that. These are perfect. So as you can see, we're picking out all of the bits that we want to be highlighted. Those baubles will do it. And I am going to try and paint around those baubles, top of the head, that type of stuff. So we'll end up with a deeper purple in the recesses and a brighter, more vibrant one on the raised areas. Do this all over your model. Doesn't matter where you hit, just uh, take your time and be careful. On this bit of the shoulder pad, brighter. So we're putting a, uh, a global highlight on that. And I'm gonna hit it specifically from above as well, a bit more than the other angles, just to give that impression. Wanna draw attention to the face, the shoulder pads, got wonderful volumes on them. And then areas with sharp bits. Don't forget the toes. Okay, so for the repeated step, take a little bit more medium. You could use either, it doesn't matter too much here. Put it on the palette, take our mix, mix it with it. And we're just trying to make something a little bit glazy here, so we're going to remove quite a lot of the brush. And we're just going to put this everywhere that we want to remain purple. So you want one flat, thin, high quality coat everywhere. And the reason for the medium is we want to keep that transparency because where those areas have been shined up, we'd like to keep them looking nice and metallic. We'll be rewarded for working fairly fast. Use a brush with a decent point, even if it's one that you use for washes, and just make sure you don't have too much on there. That's the really important part. Right, I'm gonna take that approach all over. Okay, so as ever, we've been rewarded for repetition, um, especially this section here. Looks really insane on these models because you've got loads of little uh, differences in angle and plenty of edges. What we're gonna do now to maintain the shine is we're gonna hit it with, you could leave it here if you wanted. Personally, I would like it a little bit more shiny and a little bit more depth to it. So I'm gonna hit it with a quick varnish, with a spray varnish and then we'll come back and see what the difference is. Okay, so hopefully that shows up on camera. Not only is it more reflective, I just used Monitor and Varnish from GW, by the way. Um, not only is it more reflective, there's a little bit more depth to it and striking, uh, you know, it being striking on the tabletop, this does more, I feel, especially when we put a matte base on it. So it's gonna get a base exactly like this guy, and then we get a nice contrast between shiny armor and matte base. So um, particularly when we take the weathering up the feet, it's definitely worth doing that in my opinion. If, you, um, if you've had it sitting around before the varnish or you're doing a batch or something, do make sure you blow the dust off them. I did this painting yesterday, so I gave mine a quick dust because if you varnish with a spray varnish while they're dusty, you're gonna, you're gonna make that dust and fluff permanent. Seraphim Sepia next. And we're gonna start picking out some yellow details. We're onto the really easy bits now. We need something a little bit stronger, but we can always repeat this a couple of times. You could use the yellow contrast. We're just turning our key areas gold here. So very forgiving, gonna dot them. And then what I'll do is I'll use null oil on the areas that I wish to keep silver. So we have one decision here. It's whether to turn these Gold. I think I'm going to do two. I'm going to do two steps on the details. I'm sure about. We'll see how it looks, and then we'll make the decision about the uh, the exits on the backpack. I think they could look really cool, or they could look awful. If you prefer, you could just paint these with Retributor armor. It's a brilliant gold color, and it looks very nice next to purple. I'm feeling lazy though. Now, a lot of people just presume that because Null Noil is a, a black shade, it's dark and it's strong. It's not, its coverage is fairly weak and it tends to pull more towards recesses, which has probably been designed on purpose for panel lining. So if you're, um, if you're expecting this, uh, which is the sepia, to behave exactly like the Null Noil, you'll probably be a little bit disappointed. As a result, I tend to do um, one more wash of Null Noil than I do do of the Seraphim Sepia. 
So areas like the strapping on his chest, I'm going to specifically kind of try and dot it. Leave heavy amounts on the top because I want to shade those. And I'd rather do it like this than having to highlight them. We've had some little bits where we've got dotting in places we don't from the purple step. Um, we should be able to fix that quite easily. Shake your shades, guys, because if you don't, they'll end up being really, really matte. So we are going to put a little bit of a retributor highlight on those areas um, just to kind of bring things up a little bit on the gun. Taking a tiny dry brush. And this should cover those areas where we had the slips with the purple on top. So there's no need to fix them. We're just going to kind of accidentally hit them with this stage anyway. And I'm not worried about being too careful with this because any slight bits that go over where they're meant to be, they're just going to make the gun look a little bit scratched, which I'm fine with. So much easier if you don't have to fix your mistakes, if you can just cover them with your next step. It's just efficient, something that you have to get into the habit with with army painting, because when you're going fast, stuff won't necessarily go perfectly. Use the same silver to highlight pretty much everywhere that's metallic. Careful around his chest so we don't catch the other areas. Cool. So for the joins between the armor, I'm gonna mix a bit of a Baden and Dark Reaper. The ratio doesn't matter really. Um, and then I'm going to highlight it with Dark Reaper. So as long as your color is light enough, um, but not too dark, um, you're absolutely fine. Probably 50-50 is okay. And I'm just going to block in all of these areas. Again, if we've made any mistakes, these are going to get covered over now. And if it takes two steps, that's fine. While I'm here, I'll probably paint the belt with a, uh, with just with a flat black or something. If you make any mistakes, especially because we did the varnish step, you should just be able to get a brush and quickly rub it off. It's very durable and it's quite shiny, so paint won't stick to it quite so easily. So hopefully this shows up on camera. Ribbing is really easy to fill the details in with because it's just made, you know, like raised area, recessed area, raised area, recessed area. So two thin coats will obscure the detail a lot less. And if you're highlighting the ribs, it makes it much, much less difficult. So here I've used thin coats and here I used a less diluted coat. Hopefully you can see it's kind of all of it's pulled towards the recesses, which is very unhelpful for what we're trying to achieve, which is to be able to paint these bits that are sticking out nicely. So thin your paints, guys. It's, a, it's very easy on these stages just to go for coverage and try and do it in one. You'll be rewarded because we're doing another step. So. Two thin coats, it's still super quick. The second part is if possible, run along these lines because then you'll push it into the gap rather than like cleaning your brush into the gap and exiting a load of paint. So the ones where it's easy to paint along the lines, of course, they're a doddle. But this one, if you paint it like this, what you're gonna do to exaggerate is in those recesses, you're gonna do that. You're gonna leave a blob, like a, a physical, fairly large blob of paint. So if you can go along the lines rather than down them, you won't end up cleaning your brush into those recesses. Uh, if you can't control the angle that you're going at, just because the way the model is, just uh, make sure you don't put too much paint on there and make sure it's thinned. Because we're in the 30k universe and I quite like things feeling fairly dark, I'm going to go for one more stage than non oil and I'm also going to use this to unlock a little detail step, of course completely optional. I'm going to try and put um, non oil around the base of these areas to separate the purple from the gold. So it shouldn't be too hard. Take your brush, don't load it up too much and just chase it around the edge. It's quite forgiving because it's a shade, so it'll kind of blend itself out, just like that. When they're dry, uh, it'll really help separate the two. Final wash on the, on the gun. If this pushes your previous step uh, too much to the background, those scratches and the stuff we put on, you can absolutely just repeat it, it's up to you. And of course, you don't have to do this. You can have it as bright silver or as dark silver as you like. While you're here, if you wanted to exaggerate panel lines, now would be the time to do it. Swapping to a baby brush. 
got pure Dark Reaper on the palette. Make sure you don't have too much on, particularly when chasing down lines, it's um, it's very easy to kind of over spurge them once you've got the right amount. Probably one of the only detailed steps to put on the model apart from the eyes, really. So while we're practically done, apart from detailing, I've decided that we do need some more goals going on. So I'm going to hit up the uh, hit up the back of the backpack. Careful not to let it pull too much. Here, it'll really want to run specifically into this section. Uh, don't let it coax it out. So if I put it on like that, that's what it wants to do. Don't let it. While that's dry, I'm going to be doing the basing. Now we're going to follow our, our TM scheme for this. Do go and check out our other video if you want to see the full in-depth part. I'll pop this on a time lapse though. We're going to go from Scrag for the base coat, Wash with Sarah from Shepia, and then we'll just dry brush these three. Um, more of this, less of that, a tiny bit of that, and it all turn out super, super sweet. Okay, so base is done, looking perfect. Just a super reliable uh, method that we've got there. And I've started indelicately just blobbing some scrag brown on this guy. Now, because we've varnished this, if we look a finger, we can remove it off edges. You can use a cotton bud or a Q-tip for this if you prefer. But um, anyway you make a mistake, because of that satin varnish, we can just rub right off. So these areas around the toes, if you wanted to have the armor showing through like it would, you just rub it off. Super easy. So I'm going to go through the same colors that I did on the base, um, aiming for the recesses in the areas that are, you know, kind of at the bottom um, and just making him look a little bit more dusty and weathered. Then when we combine them, it'll actually make sense visually. So to show you the second stage, we've blobbed down some scrag, get some death claw, dilute it quite a lot. It's probably like three to one water to paint, I guess. And then we're just going to aim this in the recesses. And it's basing, it's kind of natural stuff. So if it's a bit chaotic or it's not consistent, that's absolutely fine. The only thing that I try to bear in mind is areas that are, um, you know, I'm putting it in the bottom of areas. I'm not going to put it in the top. Dust would rise up and then settle in these, uh, in these recesses towards the bottoms. Gonna glaze it up the legs, dilute it even further, and then just end your strokes towards the bottom. That's where it'll be the heaviest. It'll end up being very, very pale in the middle sections. Of course, whatever you do, it's gonna pull in the recesses. That's fine though, that's kind of what we're aiming for. So don't worry um, if this looks like a technique you've not tried before, it's just not something to be worried about. It's really fun. And if it goes wrong, you can rub it off or you just accept that it's natural stuff. It's basing, it's nature. Um, maybe he fell over. To show you the uh, the power of the cotton bud, because I've got chubby fingers and it's hard to fit them everywhere I need to. Look at that, you it just really doesn't matter where you're in. Obviously try not to get fluff collected on your model. Super easy. So like I said, anywhere where there's too much, you can just remove it. And uh, this will by default leave it in the areas where it'd be the most likely to collect and stay and not get knocked off and stuff like that. You can go as far as you want with the previous step, as far as you want with this step. And of course you can repeat them and go backwards and forwards if you're enjoying it or you know if there's a discovery you make and you actually want your guys super weathered or something. But it's really good fun, very tactile and you don't need any precision whatsoever to make it work really, really nicely. Time to pop on the base. I really prefer doing bases separately, especially if they're flat and it's going to be easy to get the guy. So what we're going to do is a dry fit first, work out where we want him. And this is where there's flat sections for his feet for a good bond, but also these nice cracked details, you know, I'd like most of those viewable from the front of the miniature or maybe want the viewable form 
from behind. So that's what I'll, I'll make the decision on. Or if I've made a mistake, I can just have his foot cover it, which is always an option, of course. I think we're going to do that because I'd either cover that with a tuft or a foot. So maybe I cover it with a tuft and I pop him there. Got some super glue on the pallet, press his feet into it, take the excess off so we don't get any bulges. His arm is looking so much more shiny now it's next to some matte paint. Much better. Victory lap time. So often I leave detailing until after the basing. These are the final steps that we're going to pick and I want to see exactly what the model is going to look like. You know, 90% of him at least, the big blocky colours. Um, so often I'll do the base room, kind of get him tabletop acceptable and then I'll make a decision about what colour the eyes will be or stuff like that if I'm not already decided. Using my brush side on here, as long as you've not taken your crackle paint to the very edge you shouldn't have any issues with hitting stuff you shouldn't. Two thin coats all the way around and you get a nice crisp black line after doing it in two steps. Alright, I've decided green eyes are going to look good on. I just hit his gold areas with a quick yellow wash by the way. I used Cassandra yellow, you could use any orangey yellowy gold thing, but we will be highlighting them with Retribute Arm at the end. So for the eyes, I want the green to land nice and bright initially. Take any light paint, you could use a white. Um, I've just got Screaming Skull on my palette, so I've used that. Carefully undercoat the eye. Don't be afraid to turn it upside down or do whatever you need to do to get access to the bits that you're going for without touching other parts. All right, freehand time or detailing time in general. So we're gonna be doing the eyes first. Sorry about my voice, I'm being assaulted by pollen which is the perfect time to do your detail work, of course. So I brought my water nice and close. One of the things you want to avoid when you're doing stuff like this and putting small amounts of paint on small brushes is your tip drying before you get to the model. So bring your stuff closer and uh, don't deliberate between taking up your paint and taking it to the model. Get the right amount and just head straight in there. Okay, using pure mute green. Over that bone, it should land really nicely. Now, at the point you get tempted to carry on going, turn it over and come at it from the other angle because this way you're not going to accidentally scrape the tip or the side of your brush against this section here on the model, which is really easily done. It's one of the key mistakes. So I tend to do them 50 50. I'll do it one way, and then when I get nearly to the end, I'll turn it upside down and do it from the other side. Let's do that again. You want the right amount of diluted paint on your brush, not too dilute and too wet. But slightly, but one of the most important things is to not have too much paint on the brush, so I'll remove quite a lot. Don't wait around, get in there. Okay, the point at which you're getting tempted, turn it over. And get that last little bit. Okay, so we could absolutely leave it there, but we're going to make him fancy. And take the same brush that I had, add some water, remove it. I'm going to go to my thumb and we're going to remove a lot of this. Make sure it's really diluted. It's not diluted enough yet. And what we're going to do, right, we've now got a glaze on the brush. There's so little on the brush that it should be quite hard for us to make a scary mistake here. And we're just going to glow under the eyes. So want to push towards the eye and too little or too dilute is better than too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that two or three times. You can blow it between stages, it should dry super fast because there's barely any on the brush. About number two or three, you'll start seeing stuff appear. I know this looks slow, but if I wasn't talking to the camera, it's like two seconds blow, two seconds blow, two seconds blow. It's very quick actually, and you can't cock up. Okay, so, so you've got a slightly glowing eye now. I'm gonna put a little bit on the top one. Take a 
take a lot off the brush. I mean, a lot. Moot green covers surprisingly well. You want to be careful of that. So hold it at an angle that helps. Come on, Beaky. It's completely normal to talk to your toy soldiers while you're painting their eyes. glow going on. What I'm going to do now is we're going to use some very nice cheaty techniques to make those look much better. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop some of this in around the eye to redistinguish it where we've um, we've not got a border to it. Again you don't want too much. So going to dab it in at the bottom. Do it at the top as well if you want. Now we're going to let that dry and then we're going to do some techie shading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to push towards the upper rear of the eye with this diluted contrast paint. I'm just going to darken up that area. Take it gently, you're trying to leave kind of the if it was this eye, you're trying to leave that bit of this eye with the original moot green on. Oh no! Perfect timing. Didn't use enough glue on his face. You can of course play around until you've got it perfect. Um, I think I'm okay with it where it is. Wash your brush thoroughly because that contrast will stick about. Take some white. And then super carefully, we're going to do a dot for the back top of the eye in the middle of that dark section. There we go. Time for my favorite gold. Absolute pleasure to use Retributor. I'm going to dilute it a fair bit. Not too much on the brush. And we're going to use this to highlight those baubles. Huge difference there. Dilute it even further because we're doing some larger areas on the backpack. And you're going to just use it to concentrate them on the bits that I feel would be the shiniest. So that's towards the top. If you did take that photo of your miniature from the front and back when it was prime black this is where you could use it and you can do that you know two or three times until you're as shiny as you want to be okay freehand time look at that that's not happening is it not one bit <laughs> so uh if you've got transfers now's where you could use transfers i I'm going to be putting some eyes on my guy's shoulder, as in the Roman letter. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's not a triangle or something easy or achievable for me. I could do an arrow, I guess, uh, for like a tactical unit, but we're going to do some Roman letters and we're going to cross our fingers. So the reason for putting them on is basically this is the largest uninterrupted area on the model. Um, you know, it's the one where any streaking is going to show up the most. It's not broken up by bright gold baubles. It's not got eyes there. It's not an extra weapon. So that's the area where you most likely see mistakes. It's also the best canvas. So for multiple reasons, it's a good one to use. And uh, yeah, what we're going to do is just do a little practice on our palette. And then we'll uh, take those principles and rock on. I will use this. I really like having a detail here because this shows me the dead center. Dead center is here. So I'll use that for the orientation of where I put things. Bringing out the big guns, the scary ones. This is the coverage white. So I think that the way that we're going to approach this is we'll put some little markers down for the bottom. One of which will be in the center. We'll do the middle. Get our tops on, which are hopefully all at the same level. Like this. 
and then it'll just be a matter of beefing things out. And the most important bit is at the top and the bottom, and it's that angle that you get on the eye. So that's possibly actually not that far from the right size, but uh, it's just so much harder on a rounded surface. Okay, fingers crossed. I'm maybe going to do one in the middle actually, change my mind, and then we'll do its, its brothers either side. Hopefully you can see that my free hand tends to look awful until it's done. Okay, that's one wobbly eye, looks a bit more like a bone. Um, we're going to rock on with that though and uh, we'll try and duplicate that. Just so you're aware and you should do this too. If I wasn't on camera here, I'd be holding this model as close to my face as possible, in the steadiest position possible, and everything would get a lot easier. Don't do anything that makes your life harder work while you're trying to do freehand, unless, of course, you're trying to do a tutorial, in which case I'll let you off, and you have my apologies. It's like trying to type with a cat on your lap. It's just, it's unhelpful when you're doing something which needs concentration like this. Swap to a triple zero. Okay, we nearly got it. What I think I need to do is get the, the vertical line solid and then tweak the top and bottom. And I'll do that on the left and right. Okay, I've worked out a thing. For some reason, doing the little flicky bits from the bottom uh, or the top of the eye is much easier uh, for me to do it this way. I think it's because it's right-handed, so I can turn this guy upside down and that should help me do it on this side. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. F***ing focus. Okay, so after you've done enough to get frustrated and remember why you don't particularly enjoy freehand, what I'm going to do is anywhere that I think looks particularly bad or wobbly on there, I've got my cotton bud and I'm just going to do a little bit of selective chipping. So the top of this one looked awful. I rubbed it off. I didn't like the middles of these, so I've taken them off. Clean up in the middle. And then I'll do one more scratch through this one. There we go been in war or been in the wars so uh yeah if you make a mistake remember you can literally just rub it off later that's one of the huge benefits of using the varnish step we good all right that is it Turned out super well, like really, really well. Um, very, very pleased with this. I think it's pretty much on the same level as the Alpha Legion in terms of just like immediate striking impact. Just looks fantastic. The moment you have something like this and you multiply it, like it's gonna look pretty good on its own. 20 of these would look amazing. Five would look amazing. Five in a tank would look brilliant. So I would really encourage people to um, have a look at their schemes in a way that where you're considering what this looks like multiplied because it's for an army, right? That's the point of this. Although I am ending up with like this little weird rainbow selection of power armored Power Rangers. Um, I've done all Power Ranger colors so far, strange. Anyway, additional steps. So you could do some chipping on this, you could do some scratching on this, that'd look phenomenal. If you wanted to spend a little bit more time, you know, putting like transfers on, uh, on the knees and stuff like that, or specifically, you know, like squad marking, stuff like that, it'd look brilliant. Any type of chipping or weathering you'd be really rewarded for. You could streak and grind this, that'd look great. Stick towards the orangey ones uh, rather than the dark ones because the purple's quite deep. So if you put some dark stuff on, it'll be a bit lost. If it's slightly brighter or more pastel, it'll show up really well. Hence our basing colors working really well with it. That's it really. 
Let us know below what chapter you would like to see next. I think we've got Sons of Horus next. Um, after Imperial Fists, which I'm already halfway through. We're going fast, we're going hard. That's why my desk's a mess. Uh, but yeah, we're trying to bash out as many of these as we can so people can make an informed decision on what they want to do and have tutorial for them. Anyway, that is it. Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification. We've got plenty more Power Armor dudes to go. And we'll catch you in the next video. Wobble. Stop it.